everyone and welcome back to the today's session and very good afternoon everyone i am c a gorav chopra from jodhpur rajasthan and on behalf of icai institute of chartered accountant of india we are conducting the live classes and in today's session we are going to start the new topic that is proportion so in the previous session we had completed our first topic that was ratio and in today's class we are beginning with proportion so let's see who all are live with us now tanvi tarun bharat choudhary janvi ananya raj biswas jain mahavir durgesh mr kazi mohammad shrikant somya rajan sindhu ritu ashwarya subhashri and many more welcome back everyone and very very good afternoon so ankita arpi pratibha ritu fatima and lot more so very good afternoon to all and let us begin with our topic that is proportions so it is basically as of course connected with ratio so what is basically proportion and what are its main properties so let us write few points and after that we will begin with the questions so let us write the first point about proportion so the first point says it is the equality of two ratios proportion is equality of two ratios so when we are having two ratios and both ratios are equal then we say that they are in proportion then we can say that they are in proportion like let's say we are having a b c and d these are the four terms these are the four terms and a ratio b is equal to c ratio d first ratio is a is to b second ratio is c is to d and there is an equal to sign in between them that means these two ratios are equal so whenever two ratios are equal then we say they are in proportion all right so out of this four terms we say that a and d they are sitting on corner positions so they are known as extreme values or extreme terms so we can write the next point a and d are called extreme terms because they are lying on extreme points whereas b and c they are lying in middle b and c are lying in middle so b and c are known as b and c are called middle terms b and c are known as middle terms all right now we can do the cross product what we can do here if we apply a basic rule that is the cross product rule now what happens in this if we write the ratio a is to b in the form of a by b a by b and c ratio d as c upon d and since the ratios are equal now a by b becomes equal to c by d now there is one simple rule of cross multiplication we can simply cross multiply them and let's see what we get so a into d becomes equal to b into c so ad is equal to bc ad is equal to bc all right okay so this becomes the basic formula of cross product rule ad is equal to bc now what is happening if we see here a and d are extreme terms and b and c are middle terms so we are simply multiplying the extreme terms and we are multiplying the middle terms therefore we can write it as product of product of 
extremes is equal to product of middle term is also known as means means denotes the middle term middle terms so ad is known as the product of extreme and bc is known as product of means so ad is equal to bc this is the simple rule so let us see once again what is basically a proportion proportion is simply equality of two ratios jab do ratio barabar ho jate hain equal ho jate hain to use kaha jata hai proportion hindi mein kehte hain ise samanupat fir humne example liya a b c and d agar ye char terms hai and a is to b is equal to c is to d to first two a is to b first two terms and next two terms c is to d they are in ratio and they are equal then we have discussed that jo hamare extreme values hai jo hamare corner values hai wo kaun si hai a and d so a and d are known as extreme terms aur jo beech mein lie karti hai b and c are known as the middle terms फिर हमने बात किया क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट रूल के बारे में दैट मींस अगर हम उसे फ्रैक्शन में लिखे सो ए बाय बी इक्वल्स सी बाय डी और फिर हमें क्या करना है क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाई अप्लाई करना है और जैसे ही हम क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाई अप्लाई करेंगे तो क्या रिजल्ट आएगा ए डी इज इक्वल टू बी सी ए डी इज इक्वल टू बी सी नाउ ए डी का मतलब क्या हो गया प्रोडक्ट ऑफ एक्सट्रीम्स एक्सट्रीम वैल्यू का प्रोडक्ट एंड बी सी क्या हो गया बी सी इज नोन एज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ मिडिल टर्म्स और वी कैन सी दैट द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ मीन राइट ओके सो सम मोर पीपल आर लाइव विद नाउ मिस्टर मनीष पूर्वा जोशी आदिश्री कुमकुम धनंजय श्रेया प्रतिभा आशुतोष सौम्य राजन कौस्तु साधना ग्रेट देन गुफरान महक रॉय ध्रुव दीक्षित ओके सो दिस वॉज द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट नाउ लेट एस राइट वन मोर कॉन्सेप्ट हियर दैट इज कंटिन्यूस प्रपोर्शन कंटिन्यूस प्रपोर्शन नाउ वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस कंटिन्यूस प्रपोर्शन लेट से इफ a b and c a b and c r r said to be in continuous proportion if if b square becomes equal to ac this is the main condition so now what is the condition of continuous proportion it is b square equal to ac now how it has come ye kaise aaya hai let us discuss that let's say a and b is having a ratio and on other side b and c are in a certain ratio and they are equal the ratio of a is to b is equal to b is to c now applying the cross product rule product of means is equal to product of extreme so we can multiply the middle terms middle term is b into b that is b square and multiplying the corner terms extreme terms is becomes ac so b square is equal to ac okay all right so this is the simple basic concept so now if there are only three terms then a and c a and c becomes the first term and third term and b is the middle term or we can say mean also also we can say that b is known as the mean proportional b is known as mean proportional a is known as first proportional and c is known as third proportional 
so if there are three terms into proportion we can say that a is known as first proportional c is third proportional and b is the mean proportional or the middle proportional all right so in case of 3 we can do in this simple manner b square is equal to ac but what if there are more than three terms if there are more than three terms let's say we are having x y z w b q this much terms are there six terms are there and they are into continuous proportion then what is the condition what we can do we can write the ratio of x and y so x upon y then the ratio of y and z so y by z then ratio of z and w z by w next is w by p and last is p by q p by q so all these will become equal all these will become equal so whenever <coughs> there are three terms four terms five terms or n number of terms they will be into continuous proportion if this condition is satisfied so what is the condition ratio of first and second is equal to ratio of second and third is equal to ratio of third and fourth is equal to ratio of 4 and 5 and so on and so on this is the basic condition of continuous proportion all right so let us write some of the properties now what are the main properties of proportion proportion properties so now if we take a basic thing like if a ratio b is equal to c ratio d and it can also be written as a by b is equal to c by d this is the basic condition now now if we reciprocate them if we do the reciprocal then what will happen that means if we write b by a and d by c humne dono taraf reciprocal kar diya now the question is kya abhi ratio equal rahega will they be into proportion or not kya ye abhi proportion mein honge ya nahi answer is simple yes they will be into proportion and this is known as invertendo this point is known as invertendo invertendo means we have done the inverse humne a ko b se interchange kar diya a and b has interchanged their position similarly c and d has interchanged their position therefore it is known as invertendo let us take one simple example if we say that 2 is to 3 and 4 is to 6 are these two ratios equal or not are these two ratio equal or not simple question the answer is yes they are equal because if we cancel 4 and 6 it will again become 2 and 3 it will become 2 and 3 that means these two ratios are equal ye dono ratio equal hai then we also know that agar hame usko check karna hai whether it is into proportion or not to hum is pe apply kar sakte hain product rule now what is the product rule product of mean is equal to product of extremes so 3 multiply by 4 should be equal to 2 multiply by 6 that is we are having 12 on both the sides we are having 12 on both the side that means they are equal and whenever they are equal that means they are said to be in proportion they are said to be in proportion so 2 ratio 3 and 4 ratio 6 they are in proportion and we have proved according to cross product rule now comes the turn if we are saying that the ratio is 2 by 3 and 4 by 6 and they are equal now if we are interchanging them we are doing inverse so we are writing 3 by 2 and 6 by 4 so will they will continue to be in proportion 
yes if we cancel 6 by 4 it becomes 3 by 2 so still they will be into proportion so this becomes the first property of proportion that is invert endo so agar humne वैल्यूज को इनवर्स किया इट इज नोन एज इनवर्ट एंडो और इनवर्ट एंडो करने के बाद भी वो प्रपोर्शन में रहेंगे और राइट नाउ लेट अस कम टूवर्ड्स द सेकंड पॉइंट सेकंड से इज ऑल्टर नैंडो ऑल्टर नैंडो नाउ ऑल्टर नैंडो मींस वी हैव टू इंटरचेंज द क्रॉस पोजीशंस we can interchange the cross positions kaise interchange karna hai let us see let's say we are having originally a by b is equal to c by d and now we are interchanging c with b we are changing the positions of c and b so what it will become it will become a by c equal to b by D. That means वो अभी भी क्या रहेंगे इक्वल रहेंगे सो वॉट वी हैव डन वी ऑल्टर द वैल्यूज हमने इन दोनों वैल्यूज को ऑल्टर कर दिया चेंज कर दिया सो दे विल स्टिल बी इन टू प्रपोर्शन वो अभी भी प्रपोर्शन में रहने वाले हैं सो टेकिंग द सेम एग्जाम्पल हियर अगेन ओरिजिनली इट वॉज टू बाय थ्री एंड फोर इज टू सिक्स दिस वॉज द ओरिजिनल पोजिशन Now what we are doing? We are interchanging these two values. हमने interchange किया. So after interchanging, it becomes two by four and three by six. Now still they are equal because two by four is half. Two by four is half, and three by six is also half. So still they are equal. So this is known as alternando. All right. This is the second property. First was invert endo. second is alternando we can write them in another way like say a by c can be written as a ratio c equal to b by d can be written as b ratio d so we can write in this manner similarly invert endo can be written as b ratio a is equal to d ratio c this is invert endo all right <clears throat> now comes third one third one says componendo componendo now in this what we have to do componendo again writing the original ratio a by b is equal to c by d now if we add one on both sides if we add one on both sides still they will be equal then what will be the ratio the ratio will become a plus b by b is equal to c plus d by d c plus d by d so still they will be equal so we have added one on both sides and the ratio will still will, the proportion will still remain the same like again continue the example 2 by 3 plus 1 and then 4 by 3 plus 1 so we are adding one on both sides so what is coming 5 by 3 is equal to 10 by 6 so still both are equal so since both are equal we can say that this is Componendo and it is following proportion. So this is the third property of proportion, which is known as componendo. All right. Now next comes dividendo. Let's just write the fourth one, dividendo. Now in dividendo, what we have to do? so again the original ratio was a by b and c by d now this time instead of addition we have to do subtraction so let us subtract them so minus 1 and minus 1 so subtracting one from both the sides so if we do a minus b what will come 
a minus b by b and on the other side it will be c minus d upon d so after subtracting one from both sides it will remain equal so we can check this again on the given example 2 by 3 minus 1 and then we are having 4 by 6 minus 1 so what will come 2 minus 3 upon 3 and here 4 minus 6 upon 6 so what will be the result minus 1 by 3 and it is minus 2 by 6 so if we cancel 2 by 6 what it will become minus 1 by 3 so again both are equal so if we subtract one from both the sides we will again get the same ratio so they will be into proportion so this property is known as dividendo okay so for component and dividendo we have to simply add one and subtract one so basically what becomes the formula for component and dividendo for componendo just add both the values that is if a by b is there we have to do a plus b upon b and c by d we have to do c plus d upon d and in dividendo instead of plus we have to put minus sign this becomes dividend so only we have to do 1 plus 1 and minus 1 and not any other value okay now the property number 5 now this time we can write componendo and dividendo componendo and dividendo that means it is a combination of both componendo and dividendo that means we have to take positive from componendo and negative from dividendo so positive will come in numerator and negative will come into denominator so it will become a plus b upon a minus b is equal to c plus d upon c minus d so simply we have to add and subtract add and subtract so if we continue the example value of a was 2 and value of b was 3 so 2 plus 3 and 2 minus 3 on the other side we are having 4 and 6 so 4 plus 6 and 4 minus 6 so what is the result 5 by minus 1 and 10 by minus 2 so if we cancel we get minus 5 equals minus 5 so still they are equal so applying both together componendo as well as dividendo they will be still into proportion all right so this is property number 5 now we are coming <coughs> to last property that is property number 6 property number 6 6 is known as addendo now this time what we have to do we have to add each and every term let's say if we are given that <clears throat> if a by b is equal to c by d is equal to e by f and so on this is given so if we apply addendo addendo means add all the numerator values and add all the denominator values so what we get a plus c plus e plus and so on divided by b plus d plus f and so on so addendo means add all the numerator divided by add all the denominator so it becomes addendo okay so so till here if anyone is having any of the doubts you can let me know or you can write all clear or crystal clear you can write so everybody hit the comment section and tell is there any doubt or everything is perfect everything is okay
so after that we will move towards the examples and then back questions Sakti says clear. Tamanna they all clear. Shreya clear. Janvi. Krisha says thank you sir. It's crystal clear. That's great. Gaurav all clear. Fatima clear. Manish, Gufran, Brushali, Ritu, Purva, Shreya, Ashwarya, then Swami Rajan, Aman Negi, Ashutosh. Okay, everyone is perfect now. Some more. Adishri, Tamanna, Farheen, Srikant, Tejas, Janvi, then Tejas. Everybody is good. Okay. Now, Pranay says, yes, sir, clear, but rapid fire in Hindi will help to understand better. Okay. Then Harsh says, cross product. And then Harshita, clear. Okay. So now majority of you have done. It is all clear. Now we will do some question and it will become more clear, more crystal clear in case of any doubt to anybody. And we will do one more point that is subtrahendo. So let us write one more point, which is known as subtrahendo. Now subtrahendo means what? If we are having again the same thing, A by B equal to C by D equal to E by F and so on, then we have to subtract them. So what we have to do, take A, now subtract each and every one from this A. Similarly, in denominator, take the first term B and now subtract each and every term from here. To subtra in subtra handle, what basically we are doing, we are taking any of the ratio and subtracting all other values from it. So numerator will subtract from numerator and denominator from the respective denominator. Okay, so it becomes subtra handle. All right, so just <clears throat> giving a fast recap in Hindi. First was invert endo. Invert endo mein humne A ratio B ko interchange karke likh diya B ratio A and C and D ko interchange karke likha D ratio C, invert endo. Alter endo means humne B and C ki position ko interchange kiya. So B and C have interchanged their positions. So it becomes A by C is equal to B by D. Ya fir hum likhenge A ratio C is equal to B ratio D. Third was componendo. Componendo mein humne dono taraf one add kiya. So it becomes A plus B by B is equal to C plus D by D. Fourth had dividendo. Is bar humne minus one kiya from both the sides and still the ratios are equal. So A minus B by B is equal to C minus D by D. Then Fifth mein humne dono ko saath apply kiya, componendo as well as dividendo. So numerator mein plus, denominator mein minus. So A plus B upon A minus B equal to C plus D upon C minus D. Then comes addendo. Addendo mein humne saare numerators ko add kiya. So A plus C plus E and so on. Divided by saare jo denominators hai unko humne add kiya. So B plus D plus F and so on. Now comes subtrahendo. So, kisi bhi ek ratio sa humne start kiya. Let us take A. To A mein se humne baati saare numerators ko subtract karna hai. And divided by B. B mein se humne baati saare denominators ko subtract karna hai. So, it becomes subtrahendo. That means subtraction. All right. So, let us try some questions now. Illustration number one is there. Now, illustration number one says, rupees six and rupees eight. Rupees six and rupees eight is equal to 12 toffees and 16 toffees. Now, they are into proportion or not. So, we have to see that whenever a ratio is there, ratio must have same unit. So, first ratio 
is having rupees as the unit. So six rupees and eight rupees both are having same unit. On the other side, we are having twelve toffees and sixteen toffees. So twelve and sixteen again both have same unit. Now it is not at all necessary that both ratios must have same unit. The terms of ratio must have same unit. I repeat, rupees six and rupees eight both are into rupees. So this unit must be same. Similarly, twelve toffees and sixteen toffees. So here unit is toffees. So this unit must be same. But when we are comparing both the ratio, one is into rupees, other is into toffee. Doesn't matter. Both can become equal. So six by eight, and on opposite we are having twelve by sixteen. If we cancel them, we get three by four on both sides. That means they are equal. They are into proportion. So whenever two ratios are equal, they are said to be in proportion. All right. Now, example number one. One says the numbers two point four, three point two, one point five, and two. There are four numbers are in proportion. Now, if the question is asking whether they are into proportion or not, then what is the simple way to solve it? Just apply the cross product rule. So two point four. 3.2, 1.5, and then 2. So product of means should be equal to product of extremes. So we can multiply them. 2.4 multiplied by 2 becomes 4.8. On the other side, 3.2 multiplied by 1.5 is also 4.8. So both the sides are equal. LHS is equal to RHS, and whenever these two are equal, they are in proportion. All right. Yes, perfect. So this was the cross product rule. Second one, find the value of x. This time we have to compute the value of x. If ten by three, if question says ten by three ratio x. Now for proportion, in place of equal to sign, we can place four dots. That means two colon sign can be kept in place of equal to. Meaning is same. Five by two and then ratio five by four. Now this sign means they are into proportion. This tells us that they are into proportion, and whenever they are into proportion, we can apply the cross product rule. So, product of means x into five by two is equal to product of extremes. So, ten by three into five by four. So, we can cancel them. So what we are getting finally, we are getting ten by six, or we can say five by three. So five by three is the final result. So the value of x becomes five upon three. All right. So this was example number two. Now, <clears throat> now if we talk about the third one. Now third one says find out the fourth proportional. Now this time we have to calculate the fourth proportional. So what is the fourth proportional? That means the fourth value. So this time we have to calculate the fourth value. So first value is two by three. Second is three by seven. Third one is four, and fourth we can take x. So, because the question is asking about fourth proportional, we can take the fourth value as x. Now, multiplying the middle terms and extreme terms, what we are getting? Two by three x is equal to three by seven into four. So, easily we can calculate the value of x. X equals 
थ्री बाय सेवन इंटू फोर इंटू थ्री बाय टू सो दिस टाइम वॉट वी आर गेटिंग द रिजल्ट एटीन अपॉन सेवन सो एटीन अपॉन सेवन बिकम्स द फाइनल रिजल्ट okay now manish is asking a doubt let's see he is asking if we can we make componendo by adding one to addendo see addendo is saying if we are having all these terms a plus c plus e if you add one so that become very lengthy so this is not basically componendo in component of what we have to do we have to apply plus 1 into single ratio whatever we are having a single ratio that is a ratio b or a by b we have to add 1 into that single ratio and not into all the ratios jointly all right but if you apply here individually then it's okay no worries but if you add 1 after adding all of them that means after doing addendo then it will not be okay all right now there is one doubt from purva joshi about example number second okay purva is asking about second illustration see purva in second there are four values and these values are into proportion so first ratio and this is the second ratio and in middle the sign is of proportion this sign is about proportion so whenever they are into proportion we have to apply the cross product rule that means multiply the middle terms and it is equal to the multiplication of the extreme terms so we have to multiply them so we can easily multiply them and get the result so if you multiply x into 5 by 2 and which is equal to 10 by 3 multiply by 5 by 4 so after doing this you can solve and get the value of x so cancel 5 cancel 2 and again cancel so we are getting x as 5 by 3 okay purva and same was in example number 1 four values are given so we have to multiply the middle terms and multiply the extreme terms if both are equal that means they are into proportion okay then tanishka is asking uh, tanishka is asking about adding to question yes it will come in the later example and some back questions also so we will cover that don't worry now next one is mani meghlai is asking about example number 4 yes let's take example number 4 also now this one the force is find the third proportional so now let us understand very carefully again we are having first value as 2.4 second value is 9.6 and question is asking about third proportional that means the third value is required now whenever there are three values into proportion then what is the formula so we have read that if a b and c are in proportion if a b and c are in proportion this means that b square is equal to ac b square is equal to ac so we can apply this here 9.6 square is equal to 2.4 x so what we are getting 9.6 into 9.6 upon 2.4 on solving this we can get the result so we have cancelled with 2.4 and now 9.6 multiply by 4 so x equals 38.4 and unit is kilograms 
so in this way we can calculate the value of third proportional okay then namrata is asking about question 21 of exercise 1a yes in case of any doubts from the a exercise we will take in the end of the session okay so b square is equal to ac and tanishka is asking can we write in this manner a ratio b equal to b ratio c yes of course you can write in this way because this gives b square equal to ac so it can be written no need to worry so the result in example 4 is 38.4 kilograms all right now now comes the fifth one find the mean proportion between 1.25 and 1.8 now focus on the terms what the term is saying find the mean proportion mean proportion ka matlab kya hai middle value so this time we have to calculate the middle term so assume middle term as x so 1.25 comma x comma 1.8 now apply the formula so x square is equal to 1.25 into 1.8 now if we multiply them what comes x square is equal to 2.25 so value of x will be root of 2.25 that is 1.5 this is the value of x okay so this is the mean proportion so you have to always remember what is first proportion that is first value mean proportion second value third proportion third value okay then these properties we have already done now comes the question based on these properties so let us understand this coming towards example number 1 if a ratio b is equal to c ratio d this is given in the question that means they are into proportion whenever there is equal to sign between two ratios it means they are into proportion and their value is also given that means they are equal to 2.5 ratio 1.5 so their ratio in terms of value is also given now what is the requirement our requirement is find the value of ad ratio bc ad ratio bc so let us write them in fraction form first so a by b is equal to c by d now we require a with d that means we have to do the cross multiplication so it will become ad and b and c we require so again we have to do the multiplication so it becomes ad is equal to bc so if we do cross multiplication it shows that ad becomes equal to bc they are equal now if we bring bc on other side if we bring bc on other side what will happen it will become ad upon bc is equal to 1 in denominator nothing is written so we can say that it is again 1 so ad by bc is equal to 1 upon 1 or it can be written as ad ratio bc is equal to 1 ratio 1 ad ratio bc is equal to 1 ratio 1 so this is the result so this was the first part of the question okay so in such cases we have to identify which property we have to apply sometime question can give some of the hint like you have to apply which property otherwise in mainly uh, most of the cases you have to find which property needs to be applied so since we require ad 
so we have done the cross multiplication okay now in the next part the second part of the question it requires a plus b ratio b plus d now you can clearly see that which property is applicable because we are given a by b equal to c by d and question is saying that we have to find a plus c so we have to add the numerators and similarly add the denominators so which property will be applicable simply addendo so we have to apply addendo so we can say that a plus c becomes equal to b plus d after applying addendo now these two are is are equal to a certain value and what is that value that value is 2.5 upon 1.5 2.5 upon 1.5 so we can do some cancellations and write here we can remove the decimal first so it is 25 by 15 and after that doing the cancellation we are getting 5 upon 3 so 5 by 3 implies 5 ratio 3 5 ratio 3 so simply what we have done addendo all right now pratibha is asking about the first part aisha also first adishri okay so in the first part c it was ad is equal to bc what was originally there a by b is equal to c by d now on cross multiplications we are getting ad is equal to bc now if we bring bc on other side so bc is into multiplication here and it will go and come into denominator so bc will go into denominator and what will be left if bc is not available that means what is left is one and in denominator nothing is written that means by default it is one so we can write one here also so what is the final ratio between them so we can write ad ratio bc equal to one ratio one so the ratio is simple one is to one okay so i have done the repetition of first part and in second part we have just applied addendo and after doing addendo we are getting 5 by 3 now <clears throat> second example so this time what is the requirement the requirement is a plus c plus a plus b plus c upon c so first of all in order to add all of them what we have to apply addendo we have to apply addendo so let us apply first write the given values a by 3 is equal to b by 4 is equal to c by 7 on applying addendo what will happen it will be equal to a plus b plus c upon 3 plus 4 plus 7 okay this is there so this addendo is equal to each and every ratio it is equal to each and every ratio we can compare with any of them now according to denominator we require c in denominator we require c so that is why we can compare this ratio with c so let us compare these two ratio this is the first one and the second one if we compare these two ratio then what will happen so we require c into denominator hame c ka chahiye denominator mein chahiye so we can do the cross multiplication so what will happen so 3 plus 4 plus 7 becomes 14 upon 7 as it is is equal to a plus b plus c upon c so we have altered the values what we have done we have altered the values this is known as alternando so when only one part is altered only one portion is altered it is known as alternando so now we can cancel them and get the results of so 14 by 7 is equal to 2 and this is what we have to prove in the question a plus b plus c by c is equal to 2 and we have done the proof 
okay all right <clears throat> then done okay tanishka is asking will we get proving question in our paper see you don't have to prove in the exam but yes you have to find the result like question can come in this manner find the value of a plus b plus c upon c and some four option will be there 1 2 3 and 4 and you have to tick the correct option so in this manner the same question can appear all right so this was example number 2 now comes example number 3 <clears throat> a dealer mixes tea costing rupees 6.92 per kg now this is the price of tea 6.92 per kg with the tea costing rupees 7.77 per kg that means there are two variety of teas the price of first one is 6.92 and price of second one is 7.77 now the dealer mixes them and sells the mixture the dealer is selling the mixture at the rate of 8.8 per kg 8.8 per kg and while selling he gets a profit how much profit is he earning 17 and a half percent profit he is earning on cost or on selling price the question has made it clear on the selling price so 17 and a half percent profit is on selling price so in what proportion does he mix them so we have to find the proportion in which he is mixing both the teas okay so let us do this so we can <clears throat> clearly do one thing like we are having the cost cost price of first one is 6.92 cost price of second one is 7.77 and selling price of mixture is 8.80 8.80 now we know that the profit percentage is 17 and a half percent so can we calculate the cost price can we calculate the cost price of mixture so in order to calculate the cost price what we have to do selling price minus profit what we have to do subtract profit from the selling price so now what is the profit it is 17 and a half percent so type on the calculator 8.8 just do on your calculator type 8.8 on calculator then press minus then write 17.5 and then percentage you will get the result of cost price come on <clears throat> let me know what is the result how much you are getting selling price minus profit so we are subtracting 8.8 minus 17.5 percent of 8.8 so on calculator you can do directly 8.8 minus 17.5 percent so most of you have given the answers that is 7.26 7.26 this is the cost price this is basically the cost price of what of mixture this is the cost price of mixture now we have to find the ratio or the proportion in which we have Done the mixing. So seven point two six we are writing in middle. Cost price of one is less than seven point two six. So it is six point nine two. 
and the cost of other side cost of other is 7.77 7.77 now this is a trick and this trick will be applicable in many chapters even four to five chapters this trick will help you out okay <clears throat> so now what we have to calculate difference and difference calculate difference on both the sides calculate difference on both the sides no need to take the sign just calculate the difference so 7.26 minus 6.92 how much we are getting 0 0.34 and here also 7.77 and 7.26, we are getting 0 0.51. Ignoring the decimal, ignore the decimal. And now apply invert and do. That means we have to interchange their positions, interchange their positions. So it will become 51 ratio 34. 51 ratio 34. If we cancel them with the help of 17, what will come? 3 ratio 2. So this is the required ratio in which we can mix the two variety of T. This is the way in which we can calculate. All right. So let us repeat this. <clears throat> See, in the question, what was given? Cost price 6.92 of the first T, cost price of second T is 7.77. And the selling price of the mixture is 8.8. .8. So first of all, we have computed the cost price of mixture. So how to calculate the cost? Selling price minus profit. Selling price is 8.8, .8, profit is 17.5%. So after subtraction, we are getting 7.26. This is the cost price, okay? Now, from this cost price, this is the mixed cost price. This is the cost price of the mixture. Now we are having two varieties. So next step is to calculate the difference. You have to calculate the difference. So this is the first variety. And here we are having second variety. Now calculate their differences with this mixture. Calculate the difference with this mixture. So we are getting 34 and 51. Now, last step is most important. Never, never forget to do the last step. Otherwise, you will get the wrong answer. Last step is always interchange the values. Always interchange the values. The result is 51 ratio 34, or we can say 3 ratio 2. 3 ratio 2. So this will be the final answer. OK? So I have done the repetition of this example number three. I hope now you can try all these kind of questions with yourself, right? So this was example number three. So now before moving to the exercise, we can take a small break of five minutes and then continue with the questions, okay? So let us have a break of five minutes.
So guys, welcome back. So now it's time for the exercise. That is exercise number first B. And now you have to solve one by one all the questions and give the answers in the comment section. Okay. So let us begin with question number first. Question number first. It is about the fourth proportional. So this time you have to find out the fourth proportional. That is the fourth value. So take fourth value as X, simplify and get the result. So I think you will be able to do very easily four, six, eight, and then X. Now apply the cross product rule. So it gives four X is equal to 48. So we can find out the value of X 48 by four, that is 12. So, Fatima has given the answer A option, Manish, Janvi, option number A, that is 12. <clears throat> then comes the next question, that is second one. And this time you have to find out the third proportional. So, Aisha has also given the answer. Then Trisha, Aman. Soumya Rajan, Subhashri, Ms. R, Dhruv Dikshit, Nikita, Akilan Deshwari, Hanin, and Ritu. Yes. Now, in the second one, third proportion is required. That means we have to substitute x in place of third place. So 12, 18, and x. Now, in case of three values, b square equal to ac. So 18 square is equal to 12x. Now divide and get the result. So now this time the answer will be which option? Option number B, that is 27. Yes, 27 is correct. Most of you have given the answers. That's great. Now comes the third one the mean proportional between 25 and 81. 25 and 81. And requirement is mean proportional. That means the middle value. <coughs> so we can take X in middle place. So 25 comma X comma 81. So it becomes X square equal to 25 into 81. So what will be X taking root to root of 25 is five and root of 81 is nine. So five into nine becomes 45. Yes, so 45 is correct. Again, receive the correct answers. That's great. Now the fourth one. Fourth says the number which has the same ratio to 26 that six has to 13. Now, this is a very easy question. Just apply what question wants to say. Just apply the given information. The question says the number which has same ratio to 26 that 6 has to 13. So we can write them in simplest form. That is x by 26 is equal to 6 by 13. So what shall we write in place of X? So that ratio becomes same, ratio becomes equal. So this we have to find it out. So X by 26 is equal to 6 by 13. So come on, you can put the value and let me know what is the correct answer. Yes, option number D will be correct. Yes, most of you have given the answer 12 and 12 is option number D. So if you do the simple cross multiplication, you will get the result X equal to 26 
into six upon thirteen. On cancellation, you are getting x as twelve. Option number D. Okay. Now, <clears throat> fifth one. The fourth proportional. The fourth proportional of two a a square c is. So now we have to take the fourth value as x. So we can take the fourth value as x. Now applying the cross product rule. So how we can apply a square c is equal to two a into x. So simply cancelling a. Now what is left? A c upon two is equal to x. A c by two is equal to x. That is option number A. So again, it was very easy. <coughs> so option number A is correct. So everybody has given the answers. Fatima, Shruti, Aman, Somya, Rajan, Sadhana. Ritika, Harshita, Vandana, Nikita, then Vaishnavi, Arpita, Subhashri, Mohanti, Gaurav, Tamanna, Manish, Mukul, Shiri, Trisha, Tarun, Ritu, great. Everybody. Very good. Now the sixth one. If four numbers are proportional, then find the value of x. Now, these four numbers are into proportion and we have to compute x. So, let us write the four numbers 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 5 and 1 by x. So, these are four numbers. So, let us apply the product rule. That is the cross product. So simply what we can do, 1 by 3 multiplied by 1 by 5 is equal to 1 by 2 into 1 by x. So on cross multiplication, what we are getting, x is equal to 15 upon 2. x is equal to 15 upon 2. This is option number C. Okay. Now, seventh, the mean proportional between twelve x square and twenty seven y square. So, what we have to calculate mean proportion. That means the middle term. So, we can write twelve x square middle term we can assume as a because x is already into use and then 27 y square is the third term so what we have to do b square equal to ac <clears throat> so a square equals 12 x square multiply by 27 y square so value of a will be root of now 12 into 27. Now what will be the figure 12 into 27 is 324 into x square into y square. So what is the root of 324? 18. The root of x square is x and y square is y. So a is equal to 18xy. So this is the mean proportional. Yes. Again, everybody has given the answers correct. That's great. Now try the next one. So let us make some of the space.
this. <clears throat> now, eighth one. A is equal to b by two, and it is equal to c by five. Then find out the ratio between a, b, and c. So now this time we have to find our ratio between a, b, and c. So how it can be done? So we can write here a is equal to b by 2 and is equal to c by 5 c by 5 then then we can easily solve and get the ratio or even we can say directly in denominator value of a is nothing but 1 in denominator of b is 2 and for c it is 5 so now Which of the following ratio will be correct? So clearly, if you see the option, you can directly get the correct answer from the option as well. One, two, and five. Yes, orally or directly, we can say one, two, and five will be the correct option because we have to simply compare all these three. And on comparing, we can clearly see that we are getting the correct ratio as one, two, and five. One, two, and five. then ninth one so this type of question we have done in example also now you have to try the ninth one what is given a by 3 is equal to b by 4 is equal to c by 7 this is given and we have to find out the value of a plus b plus c upon c so this value we have to calculate now how to calculate this value so again we have to apply add and do so adding all the numerators and adding all the denominators we are getting a plus b plus c upon 3 plus 4 plus 7 now we have to compare it with c because denominator requires c yes i think values are also same as we had done in that example so we can solve this c by 7 is equal to a plus b plus c upon 14 now we have to alter these two values so 14 upon 7 is equal to a plus b plus c upon c so we are getting 2 so 2 is the final result option number c yes so most of you have given the answers that is option number c okay <clears throat> now question number 10 is also repeated we have already done from the examples this time you require ps ratio qr ps ratio qr so let us do once again p by q is equal to r by s is equal to 2.5 upon 1.5 now question requires the ratio of ps and qr so we can simply do the cross multiplication so that we can get ps is equal to qr now if we bring qr on other side it will become ps upon qr is equal to 1 therefore from here the ratio is 1 is to 1 so option number b will be correct one ratio 1 okay then question number 11 is also again repeat so you can try this simply what we have to apply x plus y that means adding the numerators adding denominators it is simply add and do so i'm simply adding 
we are getting x plus z upon y plus w. So simply 2.5 divided by 1.5, we can cancel them and the result is 5 by 3. Okay. So everybody has given the answers as five by three. Next. Now next you can try 12th one. Five X minus three Y upon five Y minus three X. So you have to find out the ratio of X and Y. So how we can calculate, let's try. So if you want, you can substitute the values of X and Y and check whether three by four is coming or not. So one by one, you can put the option and check whether it is three by four coming or not. So if it is not coming, then option number D. And if it is getting satisfied from any of the option, then that option can be corrected. Okay. Just try to substitute the values. Like say, if we put the first option, five into two minus three into nine upon five into nine minus three into two. So how much we are getting? 10 minus 27 minus 17 divided by 45 minus six is 39. So it is not three by four. Then if we try seven is to two, seven is to nine, then you have to check whether three by four is coming or not. So we can clearly see that it will not come. So answer is simply none of these. Yes. So again, most of you have given the answer, none of these. <clears throat> now in question number 13, we are given a ratio B. The ratio between A and B is three is to two. And the ratio between B and C is three is to five. And we have to find out the combined ratio of all three. We have to find the combined ratio of all three. So how to solve such kind of question? very much easy no need to worry you might have solved such question in accountancy also in partnership chapter such ratios also come so you have to find out the combined ratio of all the three persons so the one simple step is like whenever we are having such question there is one person which is having ratio in both the cases like b is associated with a as well as with c so if we make these two values equal, then we will get our result. So we can see that when A is compared with B, the value written here is two. And when B and C we are comparing, it is three. So these two are not equal. When in one place it is two and other place it is three. Now, if we make them <coughs> equal, then what is the process to make them equal? Simply multiplying the first ratio with three and second ratio with two. Why we are multiplying with this? So that they can become equal. So on multiplying, what we are getting? Multiplying with three, we are getting nine ratio six and then six ratio 10. Nine ratio six and six ratio 10. On combining, we can get nine, six and 10. 9, 6, and 10. So it becomes the final result. Okay. So option number A will be correct. All right. Option number A, 9, 6, and 10 is correct. Next. 
now the 14th one if x by 2 is equal to y by 3 is equal to z by 7 then find the value of 2x minus 5y plus 4z so let us write here x by 2 equal to y by 3 equal to z by 7 and we have to find out the value of 2x minus 5y plus 4z upon 2y so what is the shortcut way to solve this just substitute the values so in place of x we can put 2 in place of y we can substitute 3 in place of z we can substitute 7 so substitute all these three values to get the required result so 2 into 2 minus 5 into 3 plus 4 into 7 in denominator we are getting 2 into 3 so 4 minus 15 plus 28 upon 6 so what we are getting 32 minus 15 that is 17 upon 6 so 17 by 6 is the correct result all right yes 17 by 6 option number d is correct everyone has given the answer so what is the simple way to solve just substitute the values in place of x we are putting 2 in y 3 and for z it is 7 and after substituting the value we are getting the required result okay so this was question number 14 now 15 15 is similar to 13th question number 15 is exactly similar to question number 13 so you can try this so what we have to do x y and z ratio between x and y is 2 is to 3 ratio between y and z is 4 ratio 3 and now we have to find the combined ratio so simply what we have to do multiply first ratio with 4 and second ratio with 3 so multiply with 4 multiply with 3 so that they can become equal so 2 into 4 becomes 8 3 into 4 becomes 12 and 3 into 3 becomes 9 so we are getting 8 12 and 9 8 12 and 9 so option number now you can see that this option has shifted below a bit this option number in 16 d should appear in 15 d okay so answer is 8 12 and 9 <clears throat> all right next one is 16 now 16th is very very easy you can try this so let us make some space here to solve <clears throat> yes yeah, 16 you have to simply divide 750 into three parts in the ratio of 4 5 and 6 so 750 to be divided into three parts 4 ratio 5 ratio 6 now what is the total 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 15 so 750 multiply by 4 by 15 then second term will be 750 into 5 by 15 and third one will be 750 into 
6 by 15. 6 by 15. So what is the result? 50 into 4, 200. 50 into 5, 250. And 50 into 6 is 300. So in this way, we have divided 750 into three parts in the ratio of 4, 5, and 6. All right? Yes, this is the correct answer. Now, again, 17 is similar. You can do this. Then question number 18 is also similar proportion that we have done. 19. 19, you can see that this process is known as what? X upon Y is equal to Z upon W. And if it is written as Y by X equal to W by Z. So we have interchanged their positions. So this is known as what? Dividendo, componendo, alternando, or none of these. Come on. So we have changed the position of X and Y, Z and W. For this will be known as you are having four options dividendo, componendo, alternando, and then none of these. So clearly it is known as invertendo, and invertendo is not into option. So we have to mark none of these. Okay. So it was invertendo. <clears throat> then 20. P by Q is equal to R by S. P by Q is equal to R by S. And we are writing it as P minus R upon Q minus S. Since we are subtracting, so this process is known as subtrahendo. So we will take option number A, subtrahendo. All right. Yes. Next comes A by B is equal to C by D. And we have written A plus B, A minus B equal to C plus D, C minus D. So we have done plus and minus both. So it is known as componendo and dividendo. Option number C. Option number C. All right. Then 22nd, we are having plus and minus both, but into numerator it is negative and upon it is positive. So this is not componendo and dividendo. So we can see that clearly it is neither invertendo, neither alternando, neither edendo. So it will be none of these. None of these. Then 23, 24, 25 can be done easily. All we have done, many questions. 26 also we have done twice. Then 27. <coughs> so what about 27? Two numbers are in the ratio of 3 to 4. And if 6 is added to each term of the ratio, the new ratio will be 4 is to 5. Yes, this can be easily done using options. Best way is to use the option. So first check the two numbers should be in the ratio of 3 is to 4. So let us check 14 and 20. Are they into 3 is to 4? If we cancel, we are getting 7 is to 10. So 3 is to 4 is not there. A option is wrong. Option number B, 17 and 19. Again, they are not 3 is to 4. C option 18 and 24. Yes, they are into 3 is to 4. First condition is verified here. Now, second condition if 6 is added, then ratio become 4 is to 5. So add 6 into 18, we get 24. And 24 plus 6 is 30. Now, finding the ratio 4 and 5. Yes, so we are, we can verify the second condition as well. So option number C is correct. Okay.
then adishu is asking shall we give answer in decimal or fraction see as per option if option is giving answer in fraction you can calculate in fraction if it is converted to decimal you can also convert into decimal so as per the options you can convert them okay now <clears throat> now in 28 a by 4 is equal to b by 4 and we have to check see all the options are having plus and minus but plus and minus comes in which property componendo and dividendo so you can see which option is applying properly componendo and dividendo so in first option you can see on left hand side it is positive into numerator whereas on right hand side it is negative into numerator so it is incorrect then in b option b option we can see that positive positive negative negative so a plus 4 upon a minus 4 b plus 5 upon b minus 5 so this is clearly componendo and dividendo so componendo and dividendo is equal to that ratio now the third one third one is not componendo dividendo because minus and plus plus and minus so it is not componendo and dividendo so this is also incorrect so correct option will be b all right then 29 <clears throat> in 29 a ratio b is 4 is to 1 and find out the value of root of a plus b plus root of b by a so substitute the value and get the result so in place of a we can put 4 in place of b1 plus 1 by 4 now root 4 is 2 plus root 1 by 4 is half on adding we get simply 5 by 2 option number a option number a all right next 30 now see 30 is bit a lengthy question just we can solve here so what is given x upon b plus c minus a equal to y upon c plus a minus b equal to z upon a plus b minus c okay this is the given situation and what is the requirement question is asking to find out the value of b minus c into x is equal to c minus a into y sorry in place of equal to it is plus sign so here also it is plus and last one a minus b into z yes so this we have to find it out what will be the result so what we have to do we have to substitute the value so we have to put the value in place of x y and z so from where we can bring the values in place of x we can put b plus c minus a in place of y c plus a minus b and in place of z a plus b minus c so we can substitute these values so that we can get the required result so let us put so b minus c into b plus c minus a plus c minus a and here it is c plus a minus b then you are getting a minus b and then a plus b minus c now on multiplying we are getting b square then b into c is bc then we are getting b into a is ab then now we are multiplying <coughs> minus c with b so we are getting minus bc we are writing into one upon another so that it become easy to cancel 
then minus c and plus c it becomes minus c square and minus c minus a it becomes ac so we can make separate column for ac so this is the multiplication of first part the first portion now we can multiply the second portion c into c c into c we are getting c square then c into a we are getting ac so it is ac then minus uh, sorry c into minus b we are getting minus bc then minus a into c we are getting minus ac minus a into minus uh, plus a we are getting minus a square and minus a and minus b we are getting plus ab so now in this manner if we are multiplying we can clearly see that each and everything will get cancelled step by step bc plus minus ab minus plus ac plus minus similarly all the values will get cancelled at end and what will be left the left will be a big zero so this will be the answer so whenever there is the cyclical pattern what is cyclical pattern uh two positive one negative again two positive one negative next other two positive one negative so in such cyclical order whenever we solve we add and subtract add and subtract everything will get cancelled and the final result will be zero so this is the final answer okay now you can have the smile on the face because this was the last question of the exercise 1b all right so the answer was zero okay yes yeah, so most of you have given the answers now <clears throat> there was one doubt from exercise 1a question number 21 let us take that from the previous exercise 21 yes so in question number 21 what is the requirement it says if 2s ratio 3t is the duplicate ratio of 2s minus p ratio 3t minus p then we have to find the correct result so what the question is asking this 2s ratio 3t this ratio is the duplicate ratio duplicate means square so if we do the square of the given ratio we get 2s by 3t so just we have to apply the square so 2s minus p whole square upon 3t minus p whole square and this is equal to 2s by 3t now what we can do we can do the simplification and get the result so if you solve them open the square and you will get your correct result all right manish is asking in the 17th question age are coming in decimal yes if it is coming into decimal then you have to round it off okay yes now most of you are asking about the trick to calculate cube root yes now let us discuss the trick for cube roots so <clears throat> this is very important thing and it will help in many chapters so trick to find nth root so in place of n it can be 3 cube root 4th root 5th root 10th root any root you can find out with this trick so one way to solve the roots are using logarithm but it will take time because we have to see the log table anti log table so it will take normally 3 to 5 minutes but using this trick we can get the result within 30 seconds we can get the result in 30 seconds 
so what we have to do <clears throat> let us write the first step the first step is let's see if you have to find out the cube root of 3 okay or we you can take 27 you have to find out the cube root of 27 so just type 27 on the screen on your calculator screen okay we have to find out the cube root of 27 so type 27 on the screen then press root button how many times 12 times yes you heard right you have to press the root button for 12 times this is step number 1 now second step in second step what we have to do subtract 1 you have to do minus 1 okay then comes the third step after doing this we have to divide divide it with if you want to find cube root divide with 3 divide with 3 fourth step fourth step is adding 1 so add 1 Plus one, and now the last step. Do it very carefully. Press multiply equal to. This is one time. Again multiply. Again equal to second time. Again multiply. Again equal to third time. So we have to repeat this process overall twelve times. So overall twelve times we have to do into equal to into equal to. After doing these five steps. the result will be on the screen your result will be on the screen okay try this try this and let me know pranay says got the answer that's great nikita is saying answer is 3 Hundred percent correct. So just follow these steps, and you will be able to calculate the answers. So everybody else, you can try this and let me know the answer. The first step is type the number, then press root for twelve times. Second step is minus one. third step is divide divide by 3 for cube root then plus 1 and last step is multiply and equal to press this for 12 times yes now everybody has the answers shruti has given 3 vandana 3 trisha manish everybody yes great okay so whenever you are having any other number just replace the number here okay you can put the number here and let's say if you have to find out the fifth root then write 5 in place of 3 fifth root write 5 seventh root write 7 tenth root divide by 10 whatever root you have to calculate divide with that number so you will get your answer okay so these steps are common for all for each and every uh, calculation so just step just follow these five steps and you will always get your answer okay so there was one doubt from let's see where is the doubt yes aisha is asking in example 3 t cos price there's the sentence we have to mix two kinds in such a ratio that amount of profit in the first case must balance the amount of loss in second explain this okay let us see what is the point here <clears throat> so
Okay, you are asking about this statement. We have to mix the two kinds in such a ratio that amount of profit in first case must balance the amount of loss in second case. See, this statement means that the average cost, the average cost which we have computed was 7.26. This is the average cost. And average cost of first one was 6.92. And average cost of other one was 7.77. That means if we sell this 6.92, we get more profit. And if we sell 7.77, since cost is more, so profit will be less. We will get less profit. So on mixing these two, we are getting moderate profit. Neither more and neither less, we are getting the average profit, medium profit. So that is why we follow this average rule. So you don't have to uh, like confuse with this statement. Whatever we have done, that is the best way to solve and it is the easiest and fastest way to compute. All right. So no need to worry. So everybody has got the answer. Yes, that's great. So now we have done this. Last is the summary. So we can summarize all those things which we have read today. First one was invert endo. If we make inverse of the ratio, if the original ratio is PQ and RS, and if we are inverting them, that means we are writing as Q ratio P and as ratio R, then it is known as invert endo. <clears throat> and same thing can be written in fraction as well. Second was alternando. Alternando means change these two values, interchange these two middle values. So B and C can be written as C and B. So we have altered these two values. So it is known as alternando. Then we are having componendo. So what we have done, adding one. So after adding one, we are getting A plus B ratio B and C plus D ratio D. This is componendo. In dividendo, what we have to do? Simple subtraction. So A minus B, ratio B. C minus D, ratio D. So we get dividendo. <coughs> and applying both of them, applying both of them gives A plus B, A minus B, C plus D, C minus D. This is componendo and dividendo. Endo means adding numerators and adding denominators. Subtrahendo means we have to subtract the values of numerator and subtract denominators. So all these we have done. Then the quantity A, B, C, and D are known as the terms. A will become the first term, B second term, C third term, and D is the fourth term. So A and D are commonly known as extreme terms, whereas B and C is commonly known as middle terms or means. So according to cross product rule, what is the formula? Product of extreme is equal to product of mean. This is cross product rule, All right? <clears throat> then in case of three terms, we can apply this as B square equal to AC. Then if A, B and C are in continuous proportion, then the mean proportional can be find out using the above formula. So B square is equal to AC. So we can write B is equal to root of AC. B is equal to root of AC. So this can be written. <clears throat> All right. Now, Sadhana is asking 625 ka square nahura. See, for calc Calculating the square root, just type the button, ju just type the number and press square root button only once. You will get the square root. Okay. So for square root, nothing is required. Only press one single root button and answer will be on the screen. Okay. So that is <coughs> the trick for square root. So Manish says, Everything is clear. Thank you, sir. And superb teaching. Thank you so much, Manish. 
so this was overall the first portion of our chapter that is ratio and proportion now in this first chapter there are two main parts again that is indices and then logarithm so in the next session we will be doing law of indices and after that we will be doing logarithms okay so overall all these topics combine and normally we get 6 to 8 questions overall from these three topics so ratio proportion indices and logarithm so on an average we get around 6 marks of question from these topics okay let's see what others are saying pranay anand says thanks for the amazing session aisha says thank you ritu says overall crystal clear thank you om shinde then shruti ganigar very interesting class thank you that's great so i think everybody is now enjoying mathematics a bit because maths was basically a phobia especially during class 9 10 and most of the people doesn't take maths doesn't opt for maths in class 11th and 12th so no need to worry if you are doing from scratch if you are following each and every step if you are uh, applying each and every formula there is no need to worry ca foundation maths is is scoring or it can become scoring for you just follow all the steps and you will be able to solve each and every question very easily.